Good morning, everybody. I'm Jen Blandos. For those of you who don't know me, I'm here with UN Women today, and we're going to be talking about promoting your business in the modern market with Kelly Whitehead and Tash Hatherall and Polly from Tish Tash Marketing and PR Agency. So we'll get into that in a little bit, but before we get started, I would like to hand it over to Hiba from UN Women who would like to say a few words first. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, I just want to welcome everyone to this workshop. We are so happy to welcome you all. And uh, just to let you know that this, is, uh, this session is uh, within the framework of our program, UN Women program that is supported by NAMA Women Advancement Establishment on stimulating equal opportunities for women entrepreneurs in the UAE. So we, uh, the aim is to build the capacities of uh, women entrepreneurs uh, in the country. So hope you will get all the knowledge that you need to improve your business. Welcome and enjoy the session. Excellent, thank you, Hiba. Okay, so I think most of you know me already. I'm Jen Blandos and I'm going to be hosting today's session. And we have three absolutely wonderful speakers who I think is no stranger to anybody. We have Kelly Whitehead, who is the founder of Female Fusion Network. And she is a marketing extraordinaire person, anything to do with marketing, especially creative marketing around small businesses. Kelly is hands down your woman for that. So she's going to be taking us through a number of great tips and techniques for that. And then I'm so, so, so pleased that we have Tash and Polly from Tish Tash PR, which is an award-winning PR agency here in Dubai. And their specialism really is small businesses and women. And I think they're no stranger to, um, to all of us who work in entrepreneurship. And I think probably the reason why we have so many women here today is because you want to hear from Tash and Polly. So what we're going to do today is we're going to cover a number of topics that we can within, uh, within 90 minutes. And we're going to look a bit about what promotion for your small business looks like in 2021. Because let's face it, over the past 18 months, how we promoted our businesses 18 months ago is completely different today. And there's some things that there's that are the same, but there are some things that are different. So we'll be talking about the market, what things are looking like. We're also going to dig deep into looking a bit more about your ideal clients and your customers and where you can actually find them. Now, one thing as well that Kelly and Tash and Polly are going to look at, and this is really important, and I think a number of small businesses can struggle with this sometimes, is understanding the difference between marketing and PR and when you should be using which one of these within your business as well. And then we'll be talking about collaboration and how you can have collaborations and also some tips and tricks to avoid overwhelm when you're doing marketing and PR, because I think sometimes it can be very, very overwhelming because there's just so much to do. And especially if you don't have a background in this area, it can be a little bit challenging sometimes. So before we jump into everything, I would like to ask you a question. And that is, how do you feel right now about promoting your business? Now, there is a poll, which Hiba, I would like you to bring up right now. And Hiba, if you would be able to, um, to do that, could everybody just take one second and fill that in? And then we will jump into our answers. Let's go. Looking good. Lots of people who want to learn more. A few people who are feeling really confident, but it looks like there's quite a few people at the moment who maybe could do with some more tips and ideas on marketing and PR. Come on, ladies, let's fill this up so we can move on. Okay, we'll take it up to um, another few seconds here, Hiba. Okay, I think we're good. We can close that poll. It's pretty clear. There's a lot of people who, um, who would like to learn more uh, or are perhaps finding it a little bit difficult. There's only 7% who are feeling really confident at the moment 
in marketing and PR. So we'll just end that poll. There we go. So it looks like there's going to be a lot of things that, that we can cover off in today's session. So I'd like to hand it over to Kelly, who's going to jump in and talk to you all about the market here in the UAE. Thank Actually, you. you know what, Kelly, before we do this as well, because I gave a very quick introduction to you and Tash and Polly, it might be quite useful just before we dip into this, if the three of you perhaps just do a quick introduction for those who don't know you. Absolutely. Um, my name is Kelly Whitehead. I have been a marketeer for, I'm too old now, 22 years um, working across. I started my career in entertainment in theatres in the UK and then worked with the BBC in Jersey and then on to Malta, where I spent most of my time in Malta writing radio and television scripts um, for baked beans and things like that, which was really interesting. Um, and then I became um, a, a freelancer, a one woman agency um, upon my move to the UAE in 2008. Um, I created some of my own events brands, MAM events, if anybody goes back that far, Cinemama, um, and also worked with small businesses usually women owned businesses focused on families and um, specialized in digital from about 2009 as well really with the advent of um, when Facebook became big and of course Instagram didn't come along until much later than that and everything has, has just exploded exploded since then um, and I founded Female Fusion in 2015 it's actually our sixth birthday this week which is amazing um, and Female Fusion is um, a network of 15 over 15,000 um, women in business or women looking to start their business in the UAE. So alongside marketing and working with female entrepreneurs um, constantly, I have um, a very good overview of where we are now in the market and certainly here in, in, in 2021. Um, and I'm absolutely thrilled that my um, my peers, um, my experts of choice in this arena, Tash and Polly from Tish Tash um, are joining us today because I couldn't think of anybody better to be able to talk to you guys about um, how PR looks right now in the region and what you can do as a small business um, to help promote your business utilizing PR, both traditional and digital. So thank you so much, Polly and Tash for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having us. Um, you know, we are very, very, um, you know, we feel very privileged to be here with everyone today. Um, so, um, you know, I mean, obviously, Kelly, you and I, we, we go back as far as we go back. You know, I'm also over 20 years in the industry. Um, and, um, you know, I had um, over 10 years in the UK market before I arrived in the UK, uh, UAE 11 years ago. I worked for the government here. Um, um, handling um, a number of marketing for a number of radio newspapers before I decided to step out on my own um, nine years ago and set up Tish Tash. Um, and now here we are, uh, fast forward nine years, um, we have over 80 clients in the agency. We have nearly 30 amazing women that work in our team. Um, and we are really, we are, you know, female focused, fiercely female. And um, we love, you know, for us, we are an SME and we love to support the SME community. So that is very important to us. Um, and, you know, we do the broad spectrum of marketing and PR. So traditional PR, influencer engagement, um, we have, you know, we do events, um, a lot of direct to consumer. Um, but as we know, the whole world of marketing and PR is changing so, so much these days. And so we're having to kind of evolve. Um, and six years ago, I met my amazing MD, Polly, who um, really um, is part of the journey for me. I, I do think it is all about the people you go on this journey with. Um, and so um, um, Polly and I have been running uh, Tish Tash together for the past nearly six years. Um, and, you know, Know, Polly can definitely introduce herself you know she's got a fantastic background um, as well. Mute. Hi everyone sorry I was talking while on mute. Um, I'm Polly I'm MD of Tish Tash and um, I think Tash has done a great job of explaining how Tish Tash came about and what we do and um, ultimately I come from a big uh, global agency background having worked in Asia and the UK and now here so um Six years ago, I met Tash and fell in love with the ethos of her business. And I think the great thing about Tish Tash is we have been where a lot of you are. You know, it's a, we started as a startup. Um, we, you know, Tash is an incredible entrepreneur herself. Uh, and I think the reason why we love working with small businesses is that we kind of understand where they came from. And I'm 
I just love being able to use big global experience that I've gained over the last 16 years and applying them to support growing businesses here in the region. Thank you, Polly. Um, and just moving on to the next slide. Thank you, Polly and Tash. Um, I think the beauty of Tish Tash is exactly how Polly explained it, um, which is with regards to bringing um, global ideas um, and inspiration and being able to utilize that practically um, within a small and, and even micro business and startup business scenario. Because what we have is a lot of information out there that applies really only to the big guys or those with big budgets or a lot of blue sky thinking, which is great for inspiration. However, when it comes down to the day-to-day -day running or planning to start your marketing and PR journey with your business doesn't necessarily feel that it applies. And also I'm sure both Polly and Tash would agree, um, we're in a very unique market as well. So actually a lot of the big ideas and things that apply in other regions um, don't necessarily work or are quite the same um, within the UAE. So I have a quote for you here. Um, and I just thought it, it encapsulates really what we're going to be talking about over the next hour. So Beth Comstock said, whether B2B, which is business to business or business to consumer, I believe passionately that good marketing essentials are the same. We are all emotional beings looking for relevance, context and connection. And that is where we are now as we head into not even the second quarter, almost the second half of 2021. So it goes without saying that we've had such a crucial year with regards to the pandemic. Um, we're moving out of that phase now. However, there's been a very, very different feeling in the market since the beginning of the year. And I'm sure Tash and Polly would agree, and I'm sure you ladies would agree too, um, that we're looking at almost a bit of a hangover, a bit of a recoup, a bit of a reshift, a bit of a different way of thinking and different way of consumers engaging with our brands and businesses um, and whether you are literally starting your marketing journey whether you're thinking about setting up or whether you're actually established it was amazing to see um seven eight percent of our respondents say how confident they were with that um with their marketing currently that's brilliant and so many of you um looking to learn more um on the next slide I want to talk to you about the concept of where we are now as a market overview in 2021. It's really, really important to be connecting with people on a human level. It always was, but more so now. And these are trends that we're seeing from a lifestyle point of view. Um, it's about the people because the people are your customers and your clients, okay? And we need to meet people where they are now. Um, and meeting them where they are now, as in, May 2021 versus the start of the pandemic versus the year before. Look, it's gone. The old ways, the, the, the old ways are the new ways, except we're in a whole new world and we can call it the new normal. We can, we can call it anything that we like. But I think if we can all just accept today that what got us here won't get us there. And we really need to be relooking. Even if you're confident with your marketing, you might be able to relook at meeting your people, your consumers, your customers, where they are right now. And that's likely to be via social media. Um, I do like to talk about the whole spectrum of marketing for obvious reasons, but the fact of the matter is 99.999% of your marketing is going to be done online, not just via social media, but online. And we recognize completely and utterly how valuable and important social media is going to be when it comes to promoting your business. It always has been, and it still will be. It's your easiest source of customer connection, but you need targeted content that tells stories and has calls to action. A call to action is you you speaking to your people and asking them to do something else whether that's literally buy this product now send me a dm for more details link in bio um, here's the information pick up the phone let's have a chat that is a call to action and your content needs to resonate that we can talk for the hills we can show up all day all long on social media and sit there with crickets um, and if you've got no clients or customers, you've got no business. Um, and it's really important to keep that in mind um, because there is just so, so much information out there for you. There is so much, you must be doing this, you must be doing that. Um, and I just think it's really important to have a holistic view and give yourself confidence in your marketing abilities with your business right now and to really drill down, find your ideal clients and know how to speak to them. If you are utilizing PR, your imagery and videos 
are so, so important. Um, you're going to need to be utilising those within a clear hybrid approach that we're going to be talking about uh, later on. Um, with digital and traditional PR, sorry to say, traditional PR is rather a shrinking market. So when we're looking at digital PR, which we'll discuss in length later, um, either way, it's very clear that your imagery and your videos, you know, with, is it 90% of communications are non-verbal? And we understand the rise in the importance of video content, that we're comfortable with that. And we recognize that if we're not doing it already, we're gonna to have to do more. And certainly the basics of, P of PR imagery, which is your products, your services, the imagery that you have there, your headshots and all of that needs to be clear, modern, high resolution, and the ability to be able to utilize that on your social media and send out to the press. Um, customer service. Now, this is really important in 2021. It sounds obvious. I sound like I'm stating the obvious. People are looking for experiences. They are looking for great customer service, no matter how amazing your product is, how cheap it is, how easy it is for them to buy, how exclusive, tasty, all of those brilliant things. Your customer service is more important than ever. So if the talk is your product and your price and they have it there in their hand, the walk afterwards, the execution is everything. So your delivery is so important, how you communicate with your customers after dropping them a message, checking in afterwards to make sure everything's okay. How can they contact you if they have any issues? Is there any feedback? Your packaging, your delivery, your service is more, more important than ever. And it's so often an afterthought, but guys, this is where the loyalty lies. And this is truly what a consumer in 2021 is looking for, the whole experience. So again, it doesn't matter how amazing your product is. And that's a product or a service, by the way, because obviously here we've got people who are consultants, coaches, who run websites, who don't necessarily supply products. And everything that I'm gonna talk about today, by the way, really does apply to both products and service-based businesses. Your customer service and your execution is everything this year, absolutely everything. And also collaborations. I cannot stress enough how important they are. And the first thing that people think about when they think about collaborations, I know in the UAE, I obviously speak to female entrepreneurs 18 hours a day, seven days a week, um, influencer marketing, it almost feels like that's the only way to collaborate. Influencer marketing, networking, and word of mouth. And that all comes round 360 into every element and every touch point of your marketing and PR that we're gonna talk about. So really meeting people where they are now, and that's with your social media, your PR, your customer service, and your approach to collaborations, influencer marketing, networking, and word of mouth, um, rock solid customer service, and of course your amazing products and services. Thank you, Jen. So the next thing, and the very, very first thing that I want you to consider before we go any further is who is your ideal paying customer? Now, some of you might tell me, I absolutely know this. Do you? Who was your ideal paying customer in 2019? Who was your ideal paying customer in 2020? Here we are now, May 2021. Will you notice that I use the word paying? So you will have heard people talk before, I no doubt, or you've read about customer avatars or ideal customer avatars and things like that. I use the term ideal paying customer or client, of course. Um, and the reason why the word paying in there is in there, because no matter how many followers we have, no matter how much we're spreading the message, the people we really want to get to are the people who are going to become your customers or clients who are going to seal the deal, who are going to click buy it now or sign up to you. And the other thing is, it's never everyone. Who's your target market? Oh, everybody. <laughs> it's never, ever everybody. And also, again, I will keep repeating this, but the old ways are not the new ways. Who you thought was your ideal paying customer last year or the year before, or even just before the end of 2020, lives are different. And we have to identify them where they are now. And then within our marketing and promotional work, we must meet them where they are now. because. Jenny from Jamira with 2.4 children. Um, she doesn't work, she enjoys yoga. Um, she likes to meet her friends for lunch. Um, Heba who lives in Sharjah, who you know, has, has, has two children, the university students, the, it's not digging deep enough into really who your ideal paying customer is. Um, if Jenny from Jamira has, um, her husband might have lost his job at the end of last year. She might have lost her job. The children, she struggled with homeschool. They've had to cut back on certain things. However, have recognized during lockdown and homeschooling, 
um, to reassess values. Um, they used to spend a lot of time traveling. Now they don't, and they might have some disposable income. What are they selling that on? I could go on and on and on about who you thought your ideal paying customer was six months ago is potentially still there, but their lives are not the same. And we really have to identify them where they are right now, and we need to meet them where they are right now with our communications. Thank you. So how do we identify them? Well, again, this might look really, really obvious to so many of you, but again, I really want to uh, reassert the fact that I really want it's so necessary that we are looking back and digging a bit deeper. So, you know, if your business is thriving, if you're doing amazingly well, you'd be comfortable with what you're already doing. And that's brilliant. I love to see success. Um, but if things have changed for you, for example, I know a lot of e-commerce have had a relatively quiet Ramadan so far. Um, and I'm sure somebody in the chat box might prove me wrong there. But um, Things, things are kind of changing on a constant all the time. And again, the old ways are not the new ways. So you must really understand your very own value proposition. And what I mean by that is truthfully where you are. So if you are a boutique or tailor service based in Sharjah, who is your ideal paying customer? Is it likely to be somebody living at the other side of Dubai? Now, maybe it is, and maybe that's because you have an amazing delivery service. Maybe you're meeting them online already and you have a whole digital strategy. That means that uh, Jenny and Jamira is, is likely to be able to want to buy from you and receive her products and services from you in Omar Quayne, Ras Al Khaimah, Sharjah, wherever it is you are, and you can deliver that, but can you? If you can't, if your business is uber local, then really you have to look realistically at who your ideal paying customer is, because that will make it easier for you. And also you're negating the risk of negative feedback or struggles with service and delivery. You know how I keep saying how important service and delivery is, but again, it doesn't matter how amazing your products and prices and services are if we can't close the deal in a positive way. So understand your own value proposition. Again, if you're a food delivery service and you can service all the Emirates, if you're a coach of some kind or a consultant, are you ready to be doing face-to-face -face meetings? Is your ideal paying client ready to be doing face-to-face -face meetings? Your value proposition of where you can meet your clients and customers has probably changed dramatically. And if it hasn't, please, identify this person, that family, that man, that woman, that organization, if you sell B2B and understand where they are right now, what challenges they're facing and what their market looks like. Um, and that is re really re-establishing and, and, and going back to truly understand your own value proposition because maybe in time to come, you'll be able to service all the Emirates. Maybe in time to come, things will grow and be bigger for you. However, right now, your own value proposition needs to inform everything you do with your marketing and promotions. So again, we think about the location, your price point, people's buying habits, and then we go ahead to try and match their needs. Again, if people are traveling less, if people are still COVID cautious, if there is less traffic around your venue, your shop, uh, boutique, et cetera, or your offices, and your, your ideal paying customers used to be people who pass by every day and they're all of a sudden not there anymore. That again informs your own value proposition for moving forward. And we have to really identify them and be able to match their needs right now, 2021. Thank you. So I have a question. If you think you know your ideal customer or client, can you tell me who it is in the chat box? And there's no wrong answers. I promise you there is no wrong answer. It's not a poll question. Type in the chat box if you think you know who your ideal customer or client is and tell me who it is. Jen, can I ask you to read me some of the comments out, please? Yes, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> um, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, so one of, the, one of the first ones that I thought was really interesting is Garen has said, I focused on the ideal client, but I totally missed the paying part and it makes so much sense. Um, quite a few people have said, I don't know. Someone else has said, who pays cash? Um, startups and SMEs, parents with children, five to 10 years, restaurants, hotels, and some corporates. One person said we're mainly B2B. Actually, that's that's an interesting point for you to talk about as well, Kelly. Uh, someone's gone a bit more niche and said a busy professional or student who needs the IELTS exam for work or study. 
ideal customer is one who's already on a sustainable journey. Someone says they're narrowing it. Nitty says small, medium business woman, 35 plus years of age, who has a lot of success in her business, but is feeling stuck right now. Women over 40, mothers, expats, parents of teens and young adults, government and semi-government and large organizations such as big four banks, investment companies, young professionals who are active, open and global mindset. Cool. Now there's yeah, some really good answers quite, there. There's some really good yeah. answers. Um, mothers, drill down. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a couple of comments in there that were super, super specific. I think that's wonderful. Going back to what Garina, was it Garina who said about paying? Yeah. Yes, you know yeah. how I feel. Gar I think Garina knows. <laughs> Keep that front of mind. Keep that front of mind. We can create content and promote all day long, but and we can have 10 million followers and no, no customers, right? Yeah. So we're just focusing on what I would describe as often vanity metrics and bringing it down. Would you rather have 10,000 followers or 10 paying clients? Can you even manage 10 paying clients? So again, it actually makes you feel better to realize where your time is and, and who it is to focus on. And that's why saying mothers, for example, really, really needs drilling down because it, it's too wide a market for you to then work yourself into a frenzy, wondering how to be able to, 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 to access that market. And um, what we can do is when we get super clear on, on who the ideal paying client is, is then start to identify where it is that they're hanging out to use a term, um, online, offline, et cetera, and then be able to format our strategies going forward to be able to reach them directly, to be able to talk to them via our messaging in, in a way that they truly understand and benefits us and brings the clients in. Um, B2B, are people still working from home? Are you, good, are you actually able to... Are you able to access those decision makers that it is you need within the office? Do you know where they are? Have they moved on? Um, so again, that there, there's work to be done, even when we have, uh, even when we do feel that we've identified, um, you know, right down to the bottom of it, who our ideal paying clients are. Um, sustainability is huge. Um, people who are interested in sustainability, that's obviously really quite wide, but it's a start. So the next step is to. It's time to start listening. I know it sounds super, super obvious, but what my point is, I'm trying to explain. I can't really stress how important it is. Again, the old ways are not the new ways. What people were doing six months ago or a year ago is not what they're doing now. They are working in different places. They might have moved on career-wise. Um, they are traveling, all the things. Look, we're all human. We've all been through the past 18 months and we know how our lives have changed in, in very different ways. Some people's businesses have boomed through the pandemic and continue to do so. Other people's lives have been turned upside down. Other people have been affected in different ways. Um, how difficult, ladies, has it been to try and work around families for example and working from home how difficult has homeschooling been how difficult has it been for people who are used to interaction with their colleagues at work and, and staying at home has obviously been quite a lonely business for those for those um for those who live either as couples or, or even as singles of all ages how difficult has it been for teenagers um, and younger people how difficult has it been for older people who obviously weren't allowed out of the house very much, which uh, is crazy to think over 60s, etc. So everybody, even with disposable incomes, even those who have managed to keep their jobs or whose business have thrived, their personal lives have, have, have changed in very different ways. A lot of people in the UAE do a lot of traveling. Um, that's obviously been off the cards. They're missing family. Um, there's just so many, so many human elements. And if we remember back to that um, quote from Beth right at the very start, this is meeting people where they are now. There is no one size fits all. And that even goes for your niche targeted ideal paying customer. So a really good tip um, and stating the obvious, it's time to start listening. What I mean by that is you think you know who they are or you've got a good grasp on it or you're just starting. We have to start listening to what these people are saying. So if you're going back to the niche of motherhood, what problems are, look, every business, the definition really is to come in and solve a problem, which again, sounds very general, but it is. Um, people buy things because they need them. They buy things because they like them. They buy things because they want them. And that's products or services. But again, because things are different now, if we go online and we look through relevant online forums or groups, Reddit, Medium, if we use Google search to look for what people are searching for, 
um, we can find out what their problems are now. So I'm going to use an example of a coach who um, is an expert in helping people with their anxiety. OK, so if you're a coach who helps people with anxiety, what people were anxious about last year, they might not be anxious about now. You might be if you if, if you again, if you niche down to I help stressed and overwhelmed mothers um, with their anxiety. What are these stressed and overwhelmed mothers anxious about at the moment? If you look on online forums and groups, what are the questions, the questions that they are asking within online forums or groups, the things that they are searching for on Google? is their problem that you can provide a transformation to. Now, you might not be aware of this, so you might change your services and packages going forward because of what you start listening. So to simply say, I help mothers uh, with their anxiety, um, what's the hot topic this week? Why are they stressed? What, what is keeping them anxious? Is it because they haven't traveled and they're really missing their family and that connection? Is it because they are, so, you know, they're feeling that hangover of homeschooling? Um, are they anxious because they haven't had the exercise they'd normally have or the interaction with their friends? We get these answers in real time from our ideal paying customers via the questions that they're asking online. We can also obviously go one step further if you're an established business. Um, ask for feedback, send surveys and direct research, either within online groups or with your own customer base. Listen, you know, things are different. It's 2021. We're moving on, looking forward to the summer. Um, what is it you're looking for? How can I help you? Basically, this is what you are looking for ways that you can help people where they are now that will inform new packages, new services, new products. We don't know if people are going to be traveling all summer. Are more people going to be staying in the UAE? This is an opportunity for all businesses if that's the case. Would you be leaving money on the table by not creating something to meet people where they are now? If your business is travel or supplying products for travel, be it fashion, be it services, anything like that, do you now need to start thinking about the likelihood of people not leaving the UAE when they normally would? Are they gonna be taking staycations? Is it too hot? Are they staying at home more? And let me tell you, consumers are staying at home more regardless of um, lockdown ease and everything like that. People got in the habit, people have remembered kind of what means the most to them and are choosing very, very quickly where to spend their money in different ways. So it really is time to open our eyes, open the laptop, start looking around, speaking directly to our own customers or getting our own research and feedback done by going online and really looking at what people are talking about, because these are the problems that you can solve with your business and this will inform your marketing and your promotion going forward as well. Thank you. So just to reiterate, truth bomb ladies, what you thought you knew isn't necessarily true today. The market has absolutely changed. People's problems have changed. Service, transparency, entertainment and convenience are absolutely everything. And value and experience is key. So home-based services will be seeing a boom. The service delivered within a home-based service is very, very important. What else can you offer people if you offer home-based services? People are willing to spend on experience. If they are not spending on travel this year, we know they're spending on their homes because it's a sanctuary and it's where people are spending their time. People are looking inwardly and have more time for self-development if you are a coach or a consultant. If they are in the workplace and it's B2B, how can you support employees? How can you support their business where it is right now? Because sorry, nothing's the same. And this is an opportunity. This is absolutely not a negative whatsoever, but this is why the importance of what we're talking about today, rather than giving you a list of how to get a million Instagram followers, uh, how to run Google AdWords, how important SEO is, it's all part of the package, but those glamorous, shiny objects, what tech to be using, et cetera, kind of comes as a tactic after you have really, really thought about your marketing and promotion going forward for a modern market that is not and won't be the same as it was before. That's just my little truth bomb there. So your IPC is your ID, ideal, your ideal pain client is your IPC and this informs everything. So once we've identified this, once we've done a little bit of research and once we are able to um, be more aware of the problems um, that they're facing right now, you'll know what they want. Um, you'll have an idea of what they're willing to pay, um, where they hang out online and offline, what they read, websites, magazines, etc., forums, 
and really what they value. Um, and what we do know with consumer research this year is again, experience, service, loyalty, value in the sense of value for money, yes. People are also willing to pay on luxury um, and a lot of that comes down to experience and also super, super importantly, convenience. So if you work in the pet sector, for example, if you work in the pet sector and um, your ideal cl paying client last year was people who were too busy to walk and look after their own pets, for example, now they're spending more time at home, so they didn't need you and business took a, took a dip, for example. Where are they now? Are they back at work? Um, convenience is so important. What can you offer that helps them if they're back at work? Is it a time to reintroduce yourself to them? Is it a time to relook at packages? Um, convenience, again, your delivery. One of the biggest problems we see on female fusion is... Um, couriers and businesses like all of yours who struggle to find adequate delivery services we don't have a magic wand unfortunately there are services out there um there is kind of a standard price per delivery um but really there was also actually um going back to a very interesting point made in the chat box which said people who pay cash i don't know if that means cash on delivery by the way or if you meant just people who will pay <laughs> people who will actually pay cold hard cash for your products or services but on the basis of cash on delivery we know that this can affect some businesses um culturally a lot of people prefer to pay cash on delivery and we talked about this a lot in the last session that we did which was about selling um for small businesses um but do you really have to offer cash on delivery if that's what that question meant by the way um and finding people who only want to pay cash on delivery the old ways are not the new ways um it's going to help you in your business in the long run to acquaint yourself with um tools and technology that is available to you out there from a payment platform point of view from an online and a courier services point of view to really really nail that uh, value proposition which is what all the customers want they want it yesterday <laughs> they want it at the right price and they want an amazing experience and ideally at home and on their doorstep thank you jen so how many of you, so a lot of you said you wanted to learn more about marketing promotion and 26% of you said that you found it difficult. Um, and I just wanted to touch on how I feel that why promoting your business, it feels hard at the moment. And look, we get it. I, I can't express enough. Tash and Polly um, working day to day with global brands as well as smaller homegrown brands we fight the good fight um, for, uh, you know, for our female entrepreneurs in Female Fusion. We're getting feedback and comments and, and, and we're, we're talking to you all every day. So we get it implicitly. On social media, you feel bomb absolutely bombarded by do this, don't do that. You feel that you're fighting for followers or you're working really hard on your social media content and you're receiving no engagement on your posts. Engagement meaning anything from comments right through to if you're utilizing call to action, um, be that um, sending them to your website or actually buying your products and again because it's it gets me down all the noise shiny object syndrome is real and what that means is all the all the gurus all the must do's you see the must do this or don't do that so if you're not a natural marketer and i like i'm not a lawyer or an accountant or various other things then you know you're going to need help with this side of your business and it's so difficult when you go out there and you're being completely bombarded by just general noise of people trying to sell you their services usually rather than talk about these kind of things and to be honest I feel that as a general group, um, small businesses, micro businesses, female entrepreneurs feel that these are the boring things. Um, and it's the shiny Instagram stuff that they consider as their marketing strategy. But believe me, it's just a tactic. Uh, Instagram and Facebook are really, really prone to closing accounts at the moment. It's happening almost weekly. It's happening to big accounts. There's loads of loads of glitches on that platform. Um, always has been, but now more so than ever. Um, I'm not sure if she's on the call today. I'm certainly not gonna name her. I had a conversation with a lady yesterday who had had her Instagram account hacked and her issue mainly was she had no other way to contact her customers. Her entire strategy had been via Instagram. What was she to do? She did luckily have WhatsApp and text um, contact, contact, 
contact uh, with her with her customers and clients but she didn't have um, an email list for example so she was really really worried for obvious reasons um, about how if she did lose her account how she would do that so we cannot put all our eggs in that basket either and it's so important to have a 360 hybrid uh, marketing and PR approach uh, visual and video it's rammed down your throats all the time but for very good reason and you may not feel confident or skilled enough to showcase your products or services take you can take your own photographs and so many of you do it so so well you can make your own videos with a smartphone absolutely and honestly the message is more important than the medium and what that means is what it is you have to say or what it is you have to show and we have a, we have a great case study by the way as part of this uh, presentation um, about a, a business in Dubai that's worth right now and, and what it is the lady's doing which we'll get through to at the end but you don't feel confident or skilled enough to showcase your products or services via your own images or video and collaborations you don't know who to approach you don't know what the protocol is or you felt burned before because all I'm reading is influencer marketing doesn't work it's a fraud it's a scam it's all uh, from people who have tried it once in the wrong way and we are going to talk about this shortly by the way um, again, it feels hard because you feel like you want to collaborate, but you don't know who to approach. All you're reading is, don't do it this way. You've got to pay them that way. This is how much you need to pay. It's all a scam. It's all a fraud. Um, do we have to pay to speak at an event? Do Can I go in that? I just, mm, it, everything is just feeling a little bit trickier um, due to overwhelm. And I just felt that there were a few of the points that I noticed day to day um, that are reasons why promoting your business feels hard at the moment. But here's the good news, hooray. Um, when you have your ideal client in mind, when you have nailed that down as far as you think you can, when you understand where they are, going back to the research piece and the listening, this immediately strengthens your clarity on how you can promote to them. It immediately goes, well, okay, if I know that my target market is uh, teenagers or parents of teenagers at a certain age, I know where they're hanging out, I know what it is that they like, Nobody's saying you're going to have an overnight promotional strategy that's going to take you to the top of Google or, or sell out your business. But when you understand where they are, you immediately have clarity on how to promote them. And you'll notice that I haven't mentioned competition yet. And the reason I haven't mentioned competition yet is because I need to urge you all to keep your eyes on your own path and your eyes on your own prize. And your prize is your ideal paying client. And you have that nailed because you know who they are, you understand where they are, and you've got your clarity. And clarity brings confidence. Confused people do not buy. When you have clarity, you will market and promote your business with clarity, with your ideal paying client in mind, and you will not even be thinking about competition or overwhelm. So that's the good news. And here's a lovely quote from Oprah. So the key to realizing a dream is focus not on success, but on significance. And then the small steps and the little victories along your path will take on a greater meaning. And that's just going back to my last slide on good news. And the key word there is significance. Because again, I think it's highly likely, and I'll be very happy to be wrong, most of your businesses or plans for your businesses will not be to have thousands upon thousands of uh, clients or customers now for the future absolutely yes but if you're a coach how many can you manage now if you have a digital magazine platform for example you are going to want thousands of readers and you know tens of thousands of readers and that's absolutely perfectly achievable but the key word here is significance and you can start talking and promoting to the people who are most likely to be your target audience rather than spraying and praying which is which is a phrase which just means going out there and just trying to be all things to everybody and getting upset and overwhelmed that it's not having any benefit to your business or even your pocket. So we really need to focus on clarity and significance and identifying that ideal pain client. So I want to ask you, we have a question at this point, and this is going to be a poll again. So if Hibber could prepare that, that would be amazing. Thank you. I'd really, really like to know what your current number one marketing tool at the moment is. And maybe you haven't started yet, so you don't feel qualified to answer, but that's fine. But if you are already marketing or starting to market your business out of these choices, um, we just took a small selection of what you were likely to be doing. Current number one marketing tool, Instagram, paid advertising, email marketing or word of mouth. I'm not surprised at these results. I'm seeing them coming in. <laughs> and again, please, if you've started doing anything, um, if I've missed something off there, by the way, can you um, 
I didn't want to overwhelm you with the uh, poll options, but if, if I've missed anything off there, would you pop it in the chat box? That'd be great. Yeah, Cal, there's a few things that people are writing in the chat box. So some people are saying that they also use LinkedIn and Facebook. Uh, someone also has said they'd like to learn more about how they can use WhatsApp and Snapchat. Uh, yeah. A few people are using Pinterest. Fab. Thank you. Yeah, deliberately, yeah. deliberately popped Instagram up there because if you know me or you know female fusion, um, everybody seems literally totally obsessed with it. Um, and yeah. obviously it's linked to Facebook and the advertising now, but it just really, it just is clear um, that it that it seems to be people's number one, um, number one strategy or only strategy at all, in fact. A lot of people have also said things like word of mouth as well. So yeah, um, word, of mouth, word of mouth helps. Yeah. yeah which I think kind of encompasses the referrals and kind of social of media. Course, yeah. I love the fact that people are using LinkedIn. Um, I love the fact people are looking more into WhatsApp and Pinterest as well. Um, mm. We need to find a Pinterest expert because... Um, yeah, Pinterest is quite popular. Pinterest, yeah. by the way, and I am no expert in this, but I can tell you um, as a coach and consultant that I speak to um, a lot of people who claim Pinterest is their main search success mm. the clicks they get to their website via pinterest yeah well i absolutely. can't give you a pinterest strategy right now because it's not something i've educated myself in or use for any of my own businesses yet but i know people who do and they will claim it as their number one um search tool so 60 percent instagram uh yeah, that doesn't surprise me. And 20% word of mouth, but I appreciate the other comments with everything else that people are doing. What's Good interesting, piece. Kelly, is that email marketing is so low as well. <laughs> yeah. And that's something- You know how I yeah, feel about it. I, you know I how I feel about it. About you know, that, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna change your minds, guys, anyway. Yeah. Um, no, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for that. It, that, that, that this wasn't to confirm what I already knew, by the way. I love the fact in the chat that you're, you're, you're popping, you're popping um, other things in there. I just, I picked these poll options as what I believe would probably be the most likely. Um, so that's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh. So let's talk about PR and why it's different to marketing. Okay, this is in a very, very small nutshell. Marketing is about a strategy to sell. PR is about visibility, credibility, and connections. So not necessarily a direct action that brings people into your store, onto your website. However, however, it's very, very important. And the industry, Tash and Polly, I don't envy you. <laughs> <laughs> or myself some days everything is hybrid is there even is there even a difference between pr and marketing now polly what how 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 do you feel working in the agency with regards to this kind of hybrid crossover 360 do you still believe that there is a big difference between pr and marketing and if so what the difference is um no, uh, PR, PR is not what it used to be. I think, you know, a lot of people think of PR as you send a press release out, you get some coverage, job done, you know, sit back, have a drink. Um, that is not the reality of PR anymore. As you keep mentioning in this, in this uh, presentation, everything has changed. You know, we're seeing such big changes over the last year, even in, in the last two years, three years, everything is evolving so fast. So PR and marketing now, are so intrinsically linked, so intrinsically linked that we you can't really separate them. And that can be quite difficult when you're talking to potential clients and clients because ultimately everybody's bottom line is sales. It's about growing your business. It's about getting sales, getting loyal customers that keep coming back to you. But the problem is PR in the old school sense and in the, the new school sense as well to some degree is about, as you were saying, visibility, building brand awareness, giving you a good reputation, um, kind of telling those stories that are going to make people engage with your brand um, and be interested in your brand. And marketing, uh, when we think about it in a kind of black and white sense, as you mentioned, is much more uh, a, a route to sales. So it can be a really gray area when we're looking at PR and marketing. Um, Kind of intrinsically linked and it can be quite difficult to separate and almost impossible to separate the two 
it, it really is. And and the thing is, um, again, and we're going to talk about digital PR as well. Just adding another, just adding another level oh, of confusion yeah. to everybody. But what the diff, the, this hybrid approach whilst we have to look at it all intrinsically now, I think in 2021, I think you might agree, I think Tash may as well, is that whilst everything is so interlinked, it is important to look, a big part of this presentation and when I was writing it came from an educational point of view, genuinely because I am knee deep in female entrepreneurship day in, day out and marketing. And what I'm seeing is, and also um, Natasha, you write so eloquently and um, so often on LinkedIn and via Arabian business about issues in the industry. And also similar to myself, trying to educate people on where we are now and the understanding that PR can be a quick win, that it happens overnight, that one press release, you know, you're gonna be on the cover of Vogue, um, you know, top news on, on the news, um, you know, top front cover of Arabian business or something like that. Is, is what PR is and is not necessarily the bigger picture and what can actually help your bottom line or indeed as important, the brand awareness and visibility. Um, Natasha, you got um, something really unique within your agency as well. And this is kind of part of the hybrid um, and on why I really want us to be able to educate the ladies today on the importance of things like collaborations and what else is out there rather than just a press release or just being in the print media. Um, you have something really unique, which is a consumer database. And I think that reinforces what we're talking about really with regards to helping your clients meet the consumers where they are now and in some instances obviously literally in their door on you know in their homes via sampling and things like that um how important tash has has that kind of consumer connection that tish tash has that i think is really unique in the market how does that help your clients um get more visibility yeah, I think that was one of the things that, um, you know, for us, I think me and Polly always try to think about where, where the market's going and where our industry is going. And obviously none of us could have predicted COVID. But I think we knew that, I mean, I come from a background, obviously I'm very, I, I am very passionate about data. Like you, I'm very frustrated that people don't have, you know, look at the power of data and email marketing, you know, um, more. So I kind of always wanted to kind of champion that. And so we knew that, you know, getting direct to consumer in terms of sort of, you know, being able to actually, you know, sort of, uh, shorten the gap because obviously a lot of the things we do like PR they do have lead times you know you really are I mean you know we said to clients you have to at least a minimum of three months if you're building a brand you are looking at six 12 months onwards it's not a quick fix even with influencers as well so we wanted to have something which meant we could get our consumers to their our clients to their end consumers as quick as possible to at least you know you know particularly with SMEs you know everyone wants to you know they need sales they need to see results so it kind of bridged the gap as we worked on all the other things we love to do um, and so we started um, gathering data we did it um, you know we were hosting a lot of events it started small um, you know and then now we invest quite a lot of budget into um, you know data. <clears throat> sorry, um, into um, getting data, um, you know, be it through, you know, different tactics. Um, and we've got about 22,000 women in the UAE now on our database, which actually, and we have all of their demographics. We have, you know, so it is, we have clients that come to us now and they want to do a store opening or they want to do, um, you know, um, a salon wants to do, you know, get consumers in on a special offer or discount and we can target it by location, you know, whether they're mums, whether they're, you know, so we can alter the time of days for offers and incentives and things. And I do think, you know, for us, we know that we're one of the only, the few agencies that have got that and, have, you know, we've not bought that data anywhere we've spent ages growing it organically um really you know um quizzing the people that we you know on our database making sure we are giving them what they want um and it, and it is you know just in terms of being able to give our clients direct access to their customers um it has been very very powerful um you know we do so we do use it through email marketing and um, we do even focus groups for clients we can do product sampling so we're doing a lot at the moment with the likes of kind of Heinz and also some kind of smaller beauty brands to try and get product into their customers' hands to drive trial and then ultimately then they'll convert to become ongoing customers. Um, so there's so many ways that we are using our customer data and that's why I am very, uh, you know, anyone that we work with, that's one of the first questions I ask them, you know, have you got data, you know, have you got a customer database? So it's vital. So important. Um, moving on to the next slide, please, Jen. So 
just following on from what you said, um, Tash, what does PR look like for a small business in 2021? But just, just to finish what you were just talking about, and you've hit the nail on the head. So events, focus groups, um, via your consumer database, these are all things that a small or micro business can actually be doing for themselves, aren't they? Would you say? Do you, you don't have to agree with me, by the way. <laughs> No, I really do think, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, yeah, we've got to 22,000 people on our database now, but, you know, you could have like 200 people in a spreadsheet and, you know, that you know either have worked with or have really, you know, you've got to start somewhere, you know, if those 200 people, you know, that you have, you know, you've got contact details, you maybe know, you know, you know a little bit about them, start building it from day one, because at least then you'll know, okay, maybe I'm going to do this, maybe I can invite that, that's good fit with that person, so... I just think, you know, you have to start somewhere. There's no, you know, with a lot of things, you know, it could be that you do competitions on your social media, asking them, you know, to somehow, you know, get their, um, you know, hand, give their customer details. There's lots and lots of ways you can do it, um, you know, to, to gather that data. So you just have to start really. Um, and, and I'm always like, you know, particularly when it comes to, you know, we'll talk more about influencers and numbers, but you know, I'm very much like, I would rather, you know, if you've got a thousand people and they're your actual customers versus having a hundred thousand on your Instagram that are not in, in different markets, different places, um, you know, I, I'm definitely, I never, you know, I don't get too hooked up on numbers. It's more about the quality and the right people. Like, you know, like you've been saying all the way through. Well, you, you, you know, I couldn't agree. You know, I couldn't agree more. Um, and dare I say it, so just again on the topic of what does PR look like for a small business in 2021, if I could sum it up, would it be in accepting this hybrid, this linked kind of model between marketing and I, I like to call it visibility, actually, in inverted commas, full stop, literally getting your product and service out to people um, in a way that will be comfortable for you so if that means three women on zoom um or, or three leads over a coffee to chat about what they need or you know who you think might be your ideal paying clients that could be the start of your database or your customer outreach um asking questions via your instagram stories could be um part this is visibility this is you know there's a saying everything is a content opportunity and i'll talk more about content later but PR is everything's in the bucket now right do you think that and I, I hate to say this Natasha do you think that we really have to get away from the idea that PR is just I want to be in a magazine or put my product in, in a magazine I am I am confident about thought leadership by the way <laughs> and content but just this idea that PR just looks like has to look like having a product in a magazine yeah, no, totally. I mean, I, I know I love I love PR. I believe in the power of it. I've spent the majority of my career in this industry. So I, you know, I would always, always, you know, I'm very passionate about PR. But you can't just it's like it sometimes, you know, it's frustrating when people are like, you know, well, I've, I've done this and it's not driven sales or, you know, they're looking at one thing. And as we know, the average person has to, I think, see a brand or a name about at least three times to even put them on the consideration list. So it's about touch points. You know, you've got to be, it's a, one thing alone is not enough. You know, you've got to be, you know, have your, you know, your social right, you know, be it, you know, yes, you've got your PR, maybe you're in a magazine, maybe you've got Google ads running, maybe you're doing some sampling, a pop-up. So um, PR alone, one thing is not going to change your business, um, you know, and that's the reality. And I'm always very much, you know, I even have a lot of people come into our office and Polly will say the same. And then you, you know, they're an online e-commerce business. And then you say, what are you spending online? And they're like, nothing. And I'm, you know, and I'm kind of always like, you know, well, if you're an online digital business and you're spending zero online, that's the biggest problem you've got to face. Like, don't even think about PR. You know, I'm always, I would never want people to spend money if I didn't think it was the right thing. You know, get your digital online strategy right. And then obviously we can look at obviously the other kind of aspects that we can support with. Um, but no, you have to have to look at so many different things these days. PR has a very, very vital role to play. Um, but I mean, the opportunities for product placement are so few these days because magazines have reduced down their product placement pages, media and journalists, they want to hear human stories. They want to see, hear the founders. They want the thought leadership. That's where kind of one of the biggest challenges we've had this year. I mean, um, Polly and I, you know, deal with it weekly, you know, clients saying, you know, I want more product placement. Why am I not in here? And you know, when you look at uh, the pages, I would say go and buy the current magazines, you know, go and have a look um, or even have a look on their website. There is so few products, pure product push placements these days. A lot of them, even the global titles are using syndicated content from the UK. They're not even, they haven't got any regional content. So, 
um, it, that's made our job very, very diff difficult uh, in terms of the straight PR. So you have to go to what the media are wanting. And that obviously is not just product push at the moment. 100%. Um, On to the next slide. I've got kind of a rundown really here um, of, of kind of that bucket of, uh, of, of PR or visibility um, that, and kind of what it includes. And, and obviously, you know, we, we, we've touched on most of this. Um, is there anything massively missing off there? <laughs> I'm not sure. I know, like everything, everything on, the, on that list could be a one and a half hour session on its own. We understand that, ladies, and there is things you're going to want to know more about. Um, Polly, mm. can I ask if you believe in um, digital PR? Just following on from what Tash mentioned about the importance of it. Now I know that we could delve really deeply into digital PR, but I'd like to just, just for the record ladies, explain the difference in traditional PR and digital PR. Now digital PR is what Tash just touched on before. And that is um, coming with an e-commerce, but having no digital strategy. If you run an online business, people need to find your business and they need to click on things to buy and you have to send them to the right place. That's digital PR. It is not your pretty Instagram feed. It is how everything combines all together to join up, um, to be able to get you more visibility literally and purely online. Um, and that's the difference in your traditional PR really. Um, do you believe in the power of digital PR? Is it, would it be easy for small businesses to actually utilize digital PR more than it is obviously with the kind of shrinking market Tash mentioned in traditional? Yeah, I mean, I think the reality is a lot of these once, you know, nice glossy magazines are moving online as well. So we still have a lot of potential within what would once be known as the traditional vertical to actually look at the online and the reality is online especially if you have an online business or even a strong Instagram getting coverage across these online titles will actually support you with SEO um, and will help you be more visible as you say um, to your audience now what I would say is things like SEO a lot of people might not necessarily know what that means but it's probably one of the most important tools that you need to utilize um, as a business and actually you know if you have a website you probably have somebody that has helped you on the back end before and all you need to understand is what are the key words that people are going to be using when they're talking about your brand um, and in that sense that will help you with your ranking and those are the words that when you're thinking about your messaging when you're thinking about about how you want to go out to people because I mean this is one thing we haven't touched on yet the importance of a consistent message um, that you want to share with people that couldn't be more important now than within the digital space you know using all of those words that people are searching for as you said use google analytics to see what are the key search words that are relevant to your business. But ultimately people are looking for you online now before they look for you anywhere else whether that's social media whether that's via Google you know, digital PR has a role to play within that, um, therefore within you as a business being able to be more visible and therefore hopefully increase sales and increase client database. Absolutely. Thank you, Polly. Um, you know, we're, we're all on the same page when it comes to digital PR. And, and again, mm -hmm. an SEO is, 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 is so vital. And again, I think it's a session on its own. So I apologize, yeah. uh, ladies, if you feel we're glossing over certain things, but we, we could spend a day on, on all of these elements for sure, if not more. Um, so just moving on, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit, ladies, if you don't mind. And I don't mind whether Polly or Tash answers this one. <laughs> Can you tell us what's working right now, May 2021, what are, what is a small business's best <laughs> chance of visibility, would you say? You can go first, Polly. <laughs> Sorry, <I'm> girls. <laughs> Thanks, um, <laughs> What's working now? Okay, I think the, the biggest thing that's working is community groups. Um, you know, Kelly, Jen, you have one of the most engaging yep. community groups out there. That, yes. <laughs> yeah, and I think honestly, what people want now more than anything, as I think Tash kind of touched on before, is a human connection and they want to feel that they can trust a brand. And that trust can very much easily come from a friend or someone on a group recommending it 
more so than a media outlet telling you to go and buy something. So and it still sits within PR because our, our job as PR experts is to convince people that they need to do something. And, and that's again a reason why we're doing sampling as well because you get a product into the right hands. They then share that with a friend who shares it with another friend. Someone posts something on a community group as a recommendation. I mean, some of these community groups have engagement rates of 90%, you know, 92, 93%. You don't get that kind of engagement on social media, even though I'm a big believer in the power of social. You know, that level of engagement is incredible. And I think, again, it's something small businesses can do themselves. You don't need us to do that for you. Um, but you do need to get some product into people's hands for them to talk positively about you. But I think that is probably for me right now. Um, and we're doing a lot of stuff with community groups for really big global clients like Heinz, for example. We're doing a huge campaign for them. And they've never thought about community groups before as being yeah, an amazing. easy access point. Mm -hmm. It is amazing, these big global yeah, brands that just still think so traditionally. Yes. Um, so, yes, you, you know, I think that for me is number one right now. Thank you so much. Um, and moving on to the next slide, this is Tasha's favorite subject, <laughs> but so, so important to our female entrepreneurs. Everybody is so keen to know more about influencer marketing. Does it work, Tash? Does influencer marketing <laughs> work and how can it work for our small business ladies? Influencer marketing definitely works. Um, I think Polly, I think while we're laughing, you know, that is probably one of the most common um, challenges we have with clients every week. It's like, well, I've, I've done influencers for one month and it didn't work for me. Um, and like everything, it, you know, it really, really requires consistency and continuity. Influencers, like, you know, the people that were like, okay, I gave one influencer a product and it sold out my product. It, it just doesn't happen, you know, or very, very rarely. You need to think, have a proper long-term strategy and, you know, and also don't get hooked up on numbers, you know, just because, like, okay, I really want to be featured on someone with a million followers. The reality is we are getting the best results from those with 3,000 to 30,000 followers, you know, people that are genuine, real, um, and people want to follow, um, you know, it's not to say, you know, it is like what, just because one per influence is working well for one brand doesn't mean it's going to work well for your brand. So I really think, you know, I mean, we could talk all day about this before. I mean, you know, I've done training courses, you know, like three hours long. Um, so there's so much to say, but influencers definitely, definitely do work. You just have to have a strategy. You have to commit to it for at least ideally six 12 months you know you can play around with it and tweak it but you need continuity and you know um you think creatively as well like i'm very much um, into the alternative influencers so obviously there's a lot of like the bloggers you know be it the beauty bloggers the mum bloggers but increasingly i mean polly and i are working with a lot of like the female entrepreneurs that maybe have like six thousand followers but they are not oversaturated with content they genuinely you know um you know appreciate obviously the chance to receive something try it and they have a good audience of you know sort of maybe professional women entrepreneurial women so think alternatively as well and don't get caught up in just because okay that person everyone's working with them I need to be working with them you, you know you don't you need to be working with whoever's right for your brand you're absolutely right Tash and, and we can talk about influencer marketing all day long um um, for various reasons. I know there'll be questions that do, you know, I'm actually, I'm just going to touch on a couple of points um, in case people wonder, do you have to pay influencers? No, you don't have to pay them. Um, if they receive money um, with regards to your brand collaboration, then they should absolutely be licensed by the appropriate authorities to receive that money. They don't have to be licensed to receive goods or services. It's literally, if quite literally cash is, cash is changing hands or not. Do you have to give everything away for free? Again, I think we're going to touch on this on, on, on a further slide, but I just really like you all to have confidence in the fact that it's a strategy that does work and it's a strategy that can absolutely work for you on your terms. And again, we're going to touch on a couple of points on, on the next slide. Um, the um, collaborations, I think, are important um, because it's almost influencer marketing, Tash. Um, with regards to utilizing social media. And I think collaborations such as joining up with another business for a giveaway or something like that, creating a hybrid event together or things like that for me, or so speaker opportunities, these are collaborations, sampling, going in goodie bags for events. Um, to me, that falls under the collaboration banner as well. And that can be really powerful, can it? 
No, definitely. I mean, collaboration covers so many different things these days. When Polly and I, I mean, Polly looks after most of our new business um, and, you know, so she's in this day in, day out. Yeah, what kind of we bucket into collaboration it, It's any way to kind of partner, um, you know, or make the most and try and access somebody else's kind of target audience as well to kind of, you know, um, promote your own kind of brand. So there is so, so much that falls under this. Um, and yeah, be it influencers, be it partnerships with other non-competing brands, um, pop up, you know, there's there's lots of lots of different things that we put under this these days thank you and and you've given us um you've given us some top collaboration tips and i do appreciate that yes again we could spend a whole day a whole day working on this but i think what you've covered here um with these tips uh polly and tash kind of is a bit of a top line really i you know i really want to give these ladies today the confidence to think this could work for them and then to go away and think about how it might work for them um so I don't know if you've got anything to, to add to these. So we, you know, identify a good fit for your product or service. You know, um, you're a small beauty company and you want Huda Katan to promote you. You know, or somebody, you know, million followers to wear your bikinis. Um, Tasha's, you know, again, look, there's there, there's more realistic ways to get your brand visibility out there than trying to target people who will want ten thousand dollars or who whose content just 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 falls within you know you, you're just one of a million product collaborations and things like that it, it, it's a waste of time for a small business um so please identify the good fit for your product or service and it could be a network and again community groups that um that that polly rightly touched on or an influencer or another business owner again for that collaboration or an event that you could sample your products at or you could speak at um and i think i know that confidence can be an issue um, and people sit wondering what to do without actually just sending the message. Reach out. Do not be afraid to reach out um, via appropriate means, of course, via email, via DM, via picking up the phone. Request an introduction from someone else if you have mutual friends. So once you've identified your good fit, you have to actually ask them. <laughs> and then you need to share your idea or proposal. And you've got to make sure it's a win-win scenario, right, for both parties. There has to be something in it for that person as well. It's not always about paying for the privilege. It's always uh, can be about barter. But you know what? It, it's got to be a win-win. Um, and we just can't be shy. And we find, um, again, through the community and female fusion and any issues that have come up mainly, that the problems arise when boundaries or expectations are not clear. Um, you know, and people um, come to blows, not metaphorically, but, you know, problems arise when things aren't clear and people's expectations um, haven't been um, laid out from the start. So is payment required or is barter sufficient? You don't want to wonder and then get stung. What are the objectives for the collaboration? Um, you know, you, are you looking for product from them for a giveaway? What's your promise to the, to the other party? Um, so really, I think um, I think you've identified the... Uh, Polly, um, top collaboration tips. Is there anything you wanted to add? Um... I think, as you said, you were saying win-win. I think it's really important when you go out to these businesses that you have confidence in that it's a mutually beneficial idea that you're coming up with that's not something where you are literally asking a favor of somebody you know you are coming at it from a there is a way that this is going to benefit both of us and this works for everybody whether it's another brand or whether it's an influencer never go as if you're asking a favor of somebody that you don't have something to offer you will have plenty to offer that will benefit and that's the best way to look at it in any collaboration when you're looking at influencers for example always think about what is the influencer going to get out of this you know influencers good influencers are businesses in themselves they they want products that are relevant to their life that are going to support their life that are going to help them get more followers because that's ultimately what's important to them so you know have confidence as you said um, know that it is a collaboration um, and that means that it's mutually beneficial and really I would always lead with that how are you gonna what are you offering them um, rather than making it feel as if you are asking for something um, when actually you're trying to benefit everybody. Thank you, Polly. Um, and on to the next slide. You've given our, our top collaboration tips, things not to do. Um, and I'm going to run through these quite quickly because I think we've touched on a lot of things and I'm, and I'm very aware of the time. Um, so if you don't mind, um, I'm going to take your content here, ladies, and, and just quickly run through it. So again, we're just reiterating everything we've talked about, ladies. So do not be shy. If you don't ask, you don't get. You have to reach out to these people or organisations. 
don't be put off by a lack of response or the answer you didn't want. There's something else around the corner. Move on. Ask the next. Ask the next person. Um, don't be selfish. <laughs> exactly what Polly's just said. Expectations. Everybody's a different, and it's got to be a win-win. Don't be lazy. Make sure that you can supply everything required to fulfil a collaboration once you've got that nailed in. Um, don't expect miracles. Your boundaries. Everything is visibility. But let's be sensible. Again, a million extra followers or, or, or anything silly like that. And don't spam your audience. Great collaboration are a natural fit, creative and fun. Your audience will resonate without a hard sell of join this giveaway, tag 10 friends. Um, so so there, there's the tips on what not to do when it comes to collaboration. And again, I'm, I'm quite conscious of the time, but I do want to touch on um, with Natasha building relationships with, with the traditional media, um, because it's not impossible. It is a shrinking market, but it's not something that, um, you know, that, that, that should be totally ignored and I know so many small businesses who would love to see their name in print online or offline um so there's just some Natasha um there's just some ideas here of building relationships with the media um with the traditional outlets should you wish to um Jen can we have the next slide please um Kelly as well one question that somebody said that I think it's a lot of people ask this is is there any appropriate tool to find an influencer relating to a particular service or product so that's just something to think about out there you or Tasha probably might be able to answer that like a search tool for influencers yeah and if Polly's probably we do, we do a lot of research in Square Asia as well so Polly's probably the best place to answer this um, yes, there are. There are quite a few thing, a few different tools out there. Um, things like Hype Auditor is probably one of the more well-known ones. Um, what I would say is that they are very expensive tools. Um, I'm not quite sure they're worth um, the money that gets spent on them. And nothing can really beat some really good manual searching. Um, you know, looking at influencers, you know, hashtags, like click on hashtags, click on what, who people are following, um, have a look who's engaging with them, you know, clear, nothing can really take away from that. And I know it's time consuming, but I would honestly urge people to dedicate time to that rather than investing in a tool, which will take a lot of, of your money. Yeah. And it's boundaries again, isn't it? It's like take 20 minutes out of your day, take half an hour, take the whole day. If you've got it, you know, go on the biggest scroll you've ever done, um, click through, fall down that rabbit hole. But yeah, it, it doesn't, it will never take away from that kind of personal connection or that resonance with, yeah. with, with finding somebody's content that, 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 that you really engage with for sure. Exactly. It would be nice if, if it was a bit more automated, but, but some, some things aren't for a reason, I think. And, and it's, and it's definitely, definitely to your benefit when it comes to su successfully collaborating. Yeah. Yeah. Just wanted to just touch on um, Natasha. I'm, I'm going to read this slide, but I don't know if you'd have anything to add. I again, I know how important it is. It still is. People do want to get their names um, in the press. Um, yes, it's usually online, but still with the more traditional outlets. And there's definitely opportunities, isn't there? We know that they're not looking for news as much now, more opinion and comment, which is great for thought leadership um, and being able to share your expertise with the press. So building relationships with the media, it's not as difficult. It's not the dark arts, sorry, agency owners. Um, it's not the dark arts that I think um, small business owners without the industry knowledge think it is. Um, but you have to understand what the outlet is looking for. And again, go and do your research, go and buy the magazines or the newspapers and read what they're about. Do not try to target an English speaking newspaper or magazine with an Arabic press release with um, a news release that says we've got a new head of finance, you know, he's not going to be seen in Grazia or Stylist or, or anything like that, um, or Emirates Woman. However, there are so, so many trade outlets out there that do carry that kind of information as well. So it's quite an extreme example, but you're only going to waste your time if you're approaching outlets that do not cover the type of news products or services that you want to share. So the, again, manual research. Um, and when you're approaching them, you can get their contact emails online. You can get their email addresses and contact details from the actual publication itself. You can ask friends <laughs> for favors or, or, or build those connections socially via direct messages and just ask politely for contact details. And then when you do approach them, please have clear information. It's not about a six page brochure or a six page press release, clear, concise information, 
great imagery can make or break coverage. Um, a bad photo, a good story with a bad photo may not be used. Often things are very much photo led. A good story and sorry, a great photo and a mediocre story can, can provide great coverage because the image is so strong. And again, always reach out appropriately. Do not be WhatsApping journalists at silly times of day or night. Think professional and think politeness. And also don't give up at the first hurdle. That would be my advice. And I don't know if you had anything to add to that, Tash. Yeah, I, I just think we need to be mindful of the changing landscape and a lot of media outlets now, you know, they've maybe got one journalist that's doing print online, social, uh, and they're very, very stretched as well. So they do actually welcome content um, that obviously is well pitched and is the right fit and it's unique often to them. So there is lots of opportunity. Um, you need to kind of think about, yeah, like them as well, what their priorities, how can you make a journalist's life easy as well? Um, and but no, they're definitely, definitely. I always say, you know, when people are starting out and they can't afford agencies, that um, you know, you definitely can, you know, achieve things yourself. You just need to kind of, yeah, just keep it professional, keep it well targeted. One of the things that I see a lot is a lot of journalists say, you know, people are pitching me and they've never even read my magazine. That's clear because they're asking me to create content that we just don't feature. Um, so definitely get the magazines, have a just sit down with a cup of tea or a coffee and, and go through and have a look at the sections, familiarize. Um, and then, you know, you can go and pitch the right people with um, kind of, you know, um, you know, what you think is of value to them and their audience. Um, thank you. Um, Jen, we're going to skip the next slide and move on to the one after that, which is top PR tips um, that Tash and Polly have shared with us. And this is just to sum up, ladies, before we're going to talk about marketing again very shortly. So can I just thank you? Thank you so much for your input today, in case I don't get a chance to say so uh, properly afterwards. Um, your top PR tips. Um, so again, I think we're just reinforcing everything we've already discussed. Just to say there was a slide on digital PR. Um, I've skipped it because of time. And also I think we've covered a lot of the points as well. Um, be prepared, reach out, make sure you can be found. And this touches on digital PR. And again, Polly described it so perfectly. Your online searchability is key. Your good SEO, strong content with keywords and up-to-date information. Think beyond Instagram. Now I might have, I might have influenced that last one. I don't hate it, by the way. I love Instagram. I, I just know so many of you ladies are kind of just really, really focused with it as an entire strategy. Um, you don't own the platforms. You don't own the platform. So please, please be careful where you spend all your time and, and, and consider the others. Um, and people are scared to reach out to the press, Polly, would you say? People are actually kind of feel like it's some scary dark art or they have to pay an agency tens of thousands of dollars to do it for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think the most important thing is make sure that if you're going out to the, the press, you have something really interesting because that's all, you know, they are desperate for content, especially now with everything moving to digital, people need content. I mean, if you talk to these journalists, a the number of pieces of content that they need to pump out every day to meet their targets, to keep giving consumers interesting, digestible, short information that's catchy and interesting they need a lot so you are helping them as well it comes back to the the idea that you don't need them they need you too so remember that and think about that when you when you go to them as long as you've got something that's interesting I think don't do a press release don't talk to a journalist if you don't have something really catchy there are lots of other ways that you can build your brand beyond a press release I think you know we have moved beyond press releases so much but if there is something really valuable really interesting um, if you're launching something new those are the times to go to the media and say hey this is me this is what I'm doing and you know what you might not get something back but you're there you're on their radar they will have seen it they will know about it and you might find a month from then or even two months from then they're doing something that's relevant and you pop back up in their mind and then they use the content so it's back to what Tash said it's never it's not going to happen overnight don't think that it's not working if you don't hear back from them um, and just be relevant to what they need and have confidence knowing that they need you as well. 
100%. And just to put it in perspective as well, uh, ladies, this is working. Exactly what Polly's just said is what I've spent the past two weeks doing with a client, which has inadvertently turned into some PR work. And again, just exactly what Polly has described. So an initial announcement um, didn't hit top page news because something else in the same space that had a bigger figure, <laughs> a lot more dollars attached to it was bigger news. Um, and we get that. We completely understand that. But by sharing with the appropriate outlets and being on their radar, following up, saying this person is available for comment. We've also got another announcement coming up soon, and this is going to be happening. We keep the conversation going. And um, in the UK, we always said journalists are lazy, which isn't fair. <laughs> However, what we mean by that is things, especially on news desks, happen so quickly. If you're on their radar and you respond easily via WhatsApp, a phone call or an email and give them what they need quickly, they will keep coming back to use you. If they send you an email saying, can you comment on this news piece? And I really need it by end of day today. And they never hear back from you or it takes two days um, to answer to that message. They'll go on to the next person and you've missed a promotional opportunity in the press. Um, so yeah, consistency, consistency and continuity. And you can do it. You can absolutely do it yourselves. There there are freelancers out there, there are agencies such as Tish Tash, there are global agencies that none of us will ever afford. Um, so absolutely agencies are brilliant and can help you really with the longer game. But we do know that obviously with startups budgets are an issue. So you really want to consider getting your head around it yourself um, and before you look at outsourcing any of this for sure, because you can do it yourself. And also you're gonna save a few dollars as well and manage your expectations. I'm moving on to marketing now. Um, and I'm very well aware of the time so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to um, keep my eye on that. But again, can I thank Polly. Polly and Tash so much? Yes. Sorry, I was just going to say before we move on to that, because I realize that some people are going to have to leave. Uh, UN Women has asked if we can run poll number four because they need this just for their metrics to see how everybody liked it and to also be able to understand what are their sessions they can run if I could please just launch poll number four please and if everybody could fill it in that would be a great help and then we'll jump back into everything so please we've got 136 people left in the session so please 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 fill it in it's really useful thank you um all your feedback yeah. is really really helpful and we do use it to inform future sessions and also to have a better understanding of, of where you're at and, and honesty uh, we, is everything. I, we don't expect you. You don't yeah, have to be this happy. <laughs> absolutely. And a few people have also asked Kelly about if they could have a recording of the training. It is being recorded and we will have it. We're just working out what platform all of the UN women workshops will go on to. So as soon as that's sorted, then everybody who's on the UN women mailing list will get an email and you'll be able to access this and all of the other sessions. Because there is another session that we're running as well that will be after Eid, um, which is going to be on finance and money and sorting out finance for your business, which is going to be really useful, I think, for a lot of business owners. Yes. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad um, a lot of you learned a lot. Again, this isn't for our egos, um, but it is always yeah. useful to know that what 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 I'm putting out there is useful to people. Totally. Yes, but I need to lean, learn more. Of course, we could do a day on content. We could do. In fact, the next few slides I'm actually going to skip through very, very quickly because of the time. But I don't feel too bad about doing that purely because um, purely because this is just an overview of what's working right um, again a strategy and everything like this would, would take a day at a time so um, we do have another poll question about what you would like to learn more on if the answers are not there when the poll pops up then please um, please pop it in the chat box and we will absolutely make make a note of it um, so just moving on to marketing you know to think about where you're going to share your products and services um, you're going to do it on social media I bet you're doing that already you're going to do it face to face or via your website your email list that I know so many of you go, nobody reads emails or I haven't got one. Um, on to the next slide, please, if we can. You're gonna use paid advertising, you're gonna do PR and collaborations now, and you're also gonna think about, obviously via pre-book meetings if you are B2B. Um, or more of a corporate or, or, or working with the governments or things like that. Um, thank you everybody for the poll. Um, it's good to know um, so many of you learned a lot. 2% if you don't have a better understanding, if you want to tap anything in the chat box or send us anonymous messages or anything like that um, with feedback, please do um, because we are here to help and we are here to um, 
to to help all of you build better businesses via um via the united nations um you know via the the, the women's empowerment principles um and, and that, that's what the UN um, in the UAE is trying to do with female empowerment and um, and help you with your businesses. Um, yes, but I need to learn more. We get that. There's so much to go through. Um, and it's also individual paid advertising, which we haven't talked about. Um, pre book meetings, PR and collaborations, paid advertising again take a screenshot of this but you know we will be sharing um on the next thing i just want to make a point again it's a bit about the influencer and collaborations piece it doesn't work i've spent a fortune and i got no targeting so on the next slide um i just wanted to make a point about um paid advertising and it works instagram and facebook advertising works google adwords work paid collaborations work again influencer marketing if you have to pay in products or in cash the key is always a sound objective a budget and a very highly targeted audience you can absolutely outsource if some very talented female freelancers in the uae who work very hard on this and again we can make private recommendations to people we've worked with or used before um, but it's important to recognize that when it doesn't work it's always because the knowledge and the preparation isn't there paid advertising works it does not have to cost you millions or thousands of dollars it does not to see results and i can promise that and i have um you know one of my superpowers is content marketing and messaging and polly mentioned this earlier but again i felt it was an entire an entire session on its own content marketing hand in hand social media email digital and traditional pr all comes under content marketing and going right back to the start of identifying your uh, ideal paying client once you know your audience create from them but listen the good news is you can avoid social media overwhelm because you can create one piece of content once and repurpose it and what i mean by that is write that long form blog post then take elements out of your blog post and that is your social media captioning um you pop the article on linkedin you utilize it somewhere else you can create a podcast out of that you can take the words from your podcast to make the article there's it's the messaging is so important and you only have to get that messaging kind of right once it's not like one whole piece of messaging can only ever be one instagram post or one facebook post we have to we can totally and utterly avoid social media overwhelm you do not have to post three times a day but your messaging again and this will probably be a, another session your messaging is so important know your audience and create it for them where they are now remember we find out where they are now remember we know what their problems are and where they hang out so we're not writing so what content five ways to get more social media followers five ways to avoid anxiety 10 reasons why you're stressed out really me you've no idea why i'm stressed out because i'm not your ideal paying client but if you've identified me as that i want to read an article that looks like you've written it just for me and that's where consumers are these days right so you know your audience and you create everything for them once you've identified your ideal paying client and you know where they hang out and you know what kind of content they like to look at you can't avoid video don't forget subtitles most people look at their phones um with the sound down if they're at work on public transport or anything like that but again the key is consistency and always always calls to action how did you like my post did you click through to buy this get in touch if you want to know more all of these are calls to action that help your engagement rates on social media and also give you warm leads to acquire new customers or clients and this is the unpopular opinion part on the next slide guys your email marketing that so few of you are doing so few of you are doing email marketing and it's such an unpopular opinion email marketing your database is absolutely gold so on the next slide again i'm sharing my unpopular opinion <laughs> i am sharing my unpopular opinion on the next slide your email database is gold it works to inform your customers. You can share offers, new products, knowledge. You can email readers are more likely to convert. Now you're going to tell me nobody reads email. It all goes to spam. You can have 10,000 on your email database, but how many customers do you actually want? I'll give you a very, very honest um, appraisal. The female fusion has a, a very large database, very large database in its thousands. The average open rate is 40%, right? But we have events sometimes with COVID that's got a capacity of 40. I don't need 12,000 people to open that email because I can't, if they book the event, I can't, do you know what I mean? Like I can't, we can't focus too much on these metrics and say, yes, yes, some people won't read it. So that's 60% just under, well, it's over 50% not opening it, but it's thousands of people who are. 
And we don't need thousands of attendees at particular events. It's very different if it's something online or, or something like today, we could host thousands and thousands and 400 people registered today. But you emailed, and that has all been done via email marketing, essentially, I would say, and, and I think Hiba would agree, um, the United Nations database and databases of other places that have sent out this email. It works. If you are not looking for tens upon tens of thousands of followers or, or, or buyers, please, please, please build your email marketing database. So when Instagram hacks your account or Facebook takes it down, you've got a way to communicate with your customers. You can retarget abandoned carts if you link it up with your e-commerce sites. Email readers are far more likely to convert to customers and they keep coming back as well. You own that data. Please, I urge all of you to look into either reconfiguring or boosting up your email marketing or starting it if you haven't already. Um, I think we'll skip the next poll, Jen. I quickly, I wanna give a bit of inspiration by the case study. Um, and here is a case study of very, very real um, yogamagic.store, Dubai entrepreneur, a lady called Kate Shake. And I don't know if she's on the call. I know she was going to try and join, but she was busy today. And she launched, who's very kindly, very kindly shared this information in her own words very quickly with me to put into this. Um, there is nothing like a regional case study that will inspire you or ask questions or prove some of the things that we've talked about today. So Yoga Magic Store was launched by solopreneur Kate Shake on the 1st of March, 2021. So that is literally eight weeks ago, right? Around that. So Yoga Magic is a curated platform where vendors world from worldwide sell yoga and mindfulness products aimed at kids and families specifically. So it's basically yoga stuff for kids and families. And the vendors are all around the world and it's worldwide shipping, okay? So, Kate has used a very hybrid uh, 360 marketing strategy to launch and grow her, her, her business. Again, don't forget she's a solopreneur, just like so many of you. She's utilized social media. She has used paid advertising, email marketing, collaboration. And this is what it's looked like for her in her own words. So I wanna talk about paid ads um, now. Um, Jen, if we can move on to the, the slide that says paid ads, that'd be great. So listen, money is involved. Kate is spending 3,000 dirhams a month um, covering three different regions, because don't forget her, her, um, her business is global. Um, so she is spending 3,000 dirhams per month. Just bear that in mind um, across three regions, but uh, 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 specifically highly targeted ads, and she's tripled her website traffic since she started ads. Now, of course, once they're on the website, we need to convert them to buy. But what Kate's been using is awareness and traffic ads. So it's nothing to do with increasing followers yet. She's gonna look at that in the future. Um, but to use awareness and traffic ads because she wants eyeballs on her Yoga Magic site. So if she spends 150 dirhams currently, she'll get about 90 link clicks for an ad that's performing well. On a medium or low performing ad for 500 dirhams, it's 120 clicks. So it's more clicks, but it's costing them more. Basically, that's what it means that the ad's not performing as well. But 5% of those end up spending money. And she hasn't graduated to sales ads yet. This is just to get people a feel, no like trust factor onto her site, but 5% are converting. So she's not using sales um, as an objective yet. This is just about awareness. She's spending two and a half thousand for um, an expert to set up and manage and run the ads for her. But what Kate's gonna do is essentially after, after another month or so is take that back in house because she's got a very good understanding of how to do it herself. Um, she, through ads and organic reach, her Instagram reach has gone up 182% in 30 days as well. So that's a mixture of ads and organic. So that's Kate using paid ad, but emails. She's utilizing abandoned cart emails um, and she's recovering 30% of abandoned carts. That's 30% extra sales that she gets on her website that she wouldn't have if she wasn't utilizing abandoned cart emails. And she's utilizing WooCommerce and MailerLite. And she has an automatic workflow. She's sending out a, a typical newsletter. She's offering 10% to sign up. Interesting, because this is all about the data. Tash will love this. Um, the 10% uh, off offer has only been used once. Um, I send, because again, not everybody's looking for a discount. Doesn't mean they don't like you, but they're not necessarily looking for a discount. She sent three newsletters out a week. She's got an open rate between 25 and 30%. And thank you, Kate, so much for, for sharing the nitty gritty and the actual detail. So the transparency is wonderful. We love it. Um, but again, content marketing, and she has a lot of different vendors. So once a week, she introduces a specific vendor and all their products. And once a week, she's got a community-based uh, newsletter where she recommends people to follow, videos to watch, and new product releases. So you don't have to be, your content marketing would never be about just sending out the same old message time and time again so a click rate has gone up from two percent to seven percent in the past two weeks and this is because she's looking at the content and 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 the open rates and what people are clicking through to and she's really analyzing the data that she's got um 
she's guessing at one sale per newsletter, but it is hard to say because again, all these different touch points, two or three ways that people see you uh, before they buy. Um, and also what she's noticed is again, content marketing, what works for the newsletters is a mixture of her cheaper and more expensive products. It's definitely different people who click on each, which I think we'd all expect, right? And, and again, straight from the horse's mouth on, 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 the, on the next slide from Kate, shoppers recommending product results in sales. So a story series of a happy customer uh, led to two sales of the exact same products, high engagement on the stories. This has informed Kate to definitely go ahead starting working with influencers because she wasn't sure. But what she's seeing is positive recommendation results in sales. She's now gonna invest time and possibly and product into an influencer strategy because she's done the homework. She's done the preparation and she's noticing what works. We've been messing about with reels for the past couple of weeks as well. Um, and she tells me they've got a great reach, but they're time consuming and she finds it a pain. Uh, but she hasn't noticed an increase in followers or engagement with them despite the reach being bigger. And that's a really important thing to note because you must do reels, you must do this new best thing is not always the best for your business. So I want to just tell you what I want you to do right now, what you can go away and do right now, taking on board everything that we've talked about. Please go and do an audit. Please look at what has been working for you conversion wise in the past if you're already trading and double down on it. It might not be the favorite part of your business, but it's working for you now and people are buying. Double down on it. Bring that money in. Build those connections when you can. Do not leave money on the table. Give them what they want. If they're asking you for it, you might need to work on a different package or something like that or, or, or reassess things. But if they're asking for it, either online via your research or your, your actual clients are coming and asking you for it, um, give them what they want, please. But please identify what type of content matches your ideal paying client. If you're looking for the teen market, you need to be looking into TikTok, um, Reels, etc. You know, again, glossing over things, um, stating the obvious, but we don't have enough time to kind of, you know, strategies for each tactic. But type of like, content that matches your ideal paying client and how you can create more of the same. Please have confidence. Nobody can buy from you if they don't know you're there. Literally, can you imagine a shop and not putting the sign up, then wondering why nobody walks in? Please have the confidence. You have to market your business or you have no business. And, and your mindset, because so many of you lack confidence in visibility and putting yourself or your business forward. We have to understand, and I really, if you take anything away from today, please understand that keeping your eye on your own path and you do not have to be overwhelmed by marketing. It's what suits your business and converts your customers. Do not worry about what anybody else is doing. There's a lot of broke influencers out there. There's a lot of very popular publicly people who don't really have businesses. Please do not, the, 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 the success in follower numbers or the success in the amount of magazine articles or anything like that, please do not equate that to business success. Keep your eye on your own road, identify your own value proposition, this is what I have, this is what I stand for, this is what I sell, and this is who I sell to. Go out there, find these people, find out where they hang out, what they read, what they need right now. It might be a discount, it might be a repackage, it might be a different form of delivery, right? That they didn't need last year, but they need now. Find out and meet them where they are now and work your business promotions absolutely around your ideal paying client and what they want from you because they're waiting for you and they are ready to spend. And on that note, I need to embrace email marketing. I need you to make sure your images and videos are at the forefront of your marketing PR efforts. Identify anybody or an organization who you want to collaborate with. Think about your plan and reach out to them. Please reach out and do not be shy. And of course, you're going to say to me, Kelly, I can't do all of this. This costs money. How do I make videos? How do I, I get it? Couldn't get it anymore. Again, Kate is spend, Kate Shake in the case study is spending money on Facebook ads. You do not have to have that kind of budget. You absolutely don't. But sit and think about, yes, it can work for you and think about what budget you might be able to have and how you might either engage. Um, and outsource somebody to help you with that or upskill yourself. Facebook Blueprint runs courses that are free on ads. LinkedIn runs free courses. There are so many free and low cost tools and trainings available online for graphics. You know, anybody who knows me know Canva because I just, it, it, I, it's the cheapest and best tool in my marketing toolkit. I can do my own graphics. It costs me $10 a month. You know, I'm not waiting overnight for a graphic designer um, or, or spending hundreds of dollars for, for other people to do. It, and I'm happy with it. Um, editing, I can edit video on camera as well. But of course, there's other tools for that. Navigating paid advertising because you're nervous about it, but you don't want to pay somebody to teach you how to do it yet. Go and find these free courses, trainings and very low cost courses and trainings um, and technology. Do the research and 
face to face. It's not all online. Join a network and jump jump in online. The communities that Polly said were so important. I know they're important. I think it goes without saying I know they're important. Join a network, meet people face to face, upskill yourself, invest. When you pay, you pay attention. Um, join a low cost membership and get your money's worth out of it. Meet people face to face, take the online training opportunities, meet people where they are now, other entrepreneurs, you don't have to feel alone. You can meet them online, you can meet them off. But again, meeting a person, telling them what your business is, you know what, marketing is just talking to people. It's talking to people online or off. So that's another opportunity for you to go face to face and tell them, hi, I'm Kelly Whitehead. I'm a marketing coach and, and mentor. And that person knows my name and they know what I do for a living. So again, just by meeting people face to face is exactly what you can do. And please, please, please have the confidence ladies because you can do it. So we've already asked that poll question, but we do have the last one. And this is important because you've told us um, that you want to learn more and we know that you do. So if we can bring up the last poll question, then we can, um, we can get an idea of what tools people would like to learn more about. And again, in the chat box, if there's anything that we've missed off, because again, I haven't, um, haven't uh, added everything in there. Well, while we're waiting for that, because I know you can't see the chat box, but we're getting lots of love for you and Dash and Polly, everyone saying that you're inspirational and thank you so much. And um, thank you to you and Tash and Polly. I'm so, so sorry that we've run over. I'm so sorry that we've run over. And Hiba, because I might get told off my tie. I'm so sorry. I just the, the conversation with um, with, uh, with 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 Tash and, uh, and Polly was so important, which is why we brought them on. Um, and, and there's so little opportunity for you to hear these things from, from the expert's mouth. Um, so, so thank you. And I'm so sorry for, for running on. So it's interesting to see, this is not the, this is the, the poll, which marketing tools have you not tried yet? Uh, a lot, of, mm, so it's split, it's split. Which, in my in my opinion, actually, this is pretty cool because um, it shows that people are using <laughs> people are using other things. I thought more people would have not used email marketing actually, because all I hear is I'm not doing email marketing. There we go. Super. So search and content marketing, collaborations, and influencer marketing are kind of neck and neck, but again, it's pretty equal, right? Pretty equal, paid email, search and content and collaboration, super. And we had the, 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 the last poll, Jen, was just about what people wanna learn more about so it can inform future trainings. Uh, yep. But thank you all so much. And thank you to those of you who have uh, stuck around until the end again. Um, I think if you have stuck around, you, you would have found it valuable. Um, and again, sorry to, to, to rush through the end. I just wanted to uh, finally get Tash and Polly in a room <laughs> and, be able, and be able to get them to speak to you. Um, and, and yeah, we didn't, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't need to be hearing my own voice when Tash and Polly were there. So, um, so again, I apologize, but I just can never get enough of what these two ladies have to share with you. So thank you so, so much to Natasha and Polly. And thank you for those of you who have stuck around. That is me. Kelly, thank you to, to you, to Polly, to Tash for an absolutely wonderful session. Thank you so much for sharing all of your insight. This is one of the, the more critical things that people need to think about for their business. And we get asked this a lot. So it's so nice that we were able to condense as much as we possibly could. And I know there's a million other areas to cover. And I think over the next couple of years, especially with you and women, we are going to look at doing deep dives into this. So this is very much a big picture, all of the different things you can do, and then expect to have some very detailed, intensive sessions on each of these topics. So it will really help you master that as well. So thank you very much to everyone. I don't know if anybody has any other questions while we have our experts here, if you'd like to, to say anything. I know Tash and Polly will be cursing me as well. <laughs> Lots of thank you very much. You're all very inspirational. Um, so, and yes, all three of you are very inspirational and we're very fortunate to have such wonderful entrepreneurs like yourselves supporting female entrepreneurs in the UAE. So thank you very much for that. Having a look, 
if anybody has any questions. Someone, Someone said, said one to, of the best oh, sessions. I'm, I'm reading, Jern. Someone said to me, my services are not in demand. Is there such a thing? They're telling you it's not in demand, Zovig, because they're not your ideal paying customer. Yeah. I know what you do, and we know your services are in demand. So just like if when you go do your research, don't go ask people who are never going to be your ideal, ideal paying customer. I would never ask my husband or my dad what I should do in my business because they haven't got a clue. They're not the ideal paying client. I ask them on business questions, you know, kind of overview or strategy. I can't talk to them about female entrepreneurship or marketing because it's not their, it's not their zone of genius. They're not the ideal client. They're not going to give me the best advice. Um, don't ignore them. So honestly, Zovig, that's the best thing I can say to you. Ignore them mm -hmm. and go ask somebody who does care. If your target market is women, which I think it is, although not necessarily women or men who are interested in fashion, this is who you need to go and find. Sarah, how do I get customers to drop in reviews? Customers tell me they love the product. They are too lazy, right? Polly, Google, Google reviews and stuff. People do want to <laughs> give you good feedback, but you yep. getting them to actually do it. Have you got any tips? I mean, very basically you can incentivize them with something you know you give a a little free sample of something or you i don't know think about how you might be able to incentivize people in return for reviews but if they are loyal and they do love your brand if you make it very easy just click on this link please do this you know make it as simple for them as possible um you know we do find that people will do it and it is really really important as I, I know we didn't get to talk about digital as much as we would have liked to but yes google reviews so so important so yeah, I think if there's a way of incentivizing somehow or just make it super easy for them. Yeah, yeah. send them the link. I'm, I'm not tell them what to say, but <laughs> genuinely, yeah, make yeah. it as possible. And don't forget with testimonials, even if you can grab a WhatsApp or something on DM, because people are that lazy, but you know, you get good feedback on a WhatsApp or a DM, screenshot it. I ask, if you're going to share, you can use that in your content, of course, with permission, okay. right? You can't go and add it to Google because it's not, you know, Google are important, but other testimonials are important as well. Um, this testimonials is good, on your website are really important exactly. as well. They it, help with SEO yeah. and all of those things. So yes, exactly. Yeah, good words. Nice words from people will always see you well. Get them Definitely. in any which way you can. <laughs> Stick a camera in. <laughs> um, have, I we have a because... hand raised. We have a hand raised from I... Her Excellency Al Atfani. Oh, welcome, um, Her Excellency. Excellency. Hi. Your Hi. Excellency. How are you? Good. How are uh, you? Thank you, Hiba. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, all of you. It's a really amazing. Uh, we are blessed to be with you, and I just want to say it's a fantastic as advisors you are you are saying, Kelly. It's uh, more a tool to work and to promote ourselves. For through a lot of people, maybe they say it uh, is usual, but it's not usual because we have to remind ourselves and left hand of ourselves and guide ourselves uh, as a women entrepreneur. Uh, just I want to say, if Heba, can we organize something more sharper and more like uh, focused, like 20 by 20 by 20 women and we make this training and we see which team of the 20 is done this scope of job what Kelly advise us and what's the uh, what's next what the review what we we learn from this and what it was the impact because it's great idea and many people take it easy because we pay a lot of money for advertising and for people and for designer graphic and in the end they don't do the things like we wish and Miss Kelly, she's right. Sometimes our culture is different, our expectation is different, and our even view of the like Dubai here is cosmopolitan. We have a lot of nationality, but it's not the same in India, not same in France, not same in Africa. So how we can combine this marketing for globalization as a niche market and expectation to be everywhere extended for our business. What's your advice, Miss Gilly? Thank you again. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your feedback and, and your comments. We really, really appreciate it. And Ramadan Kareem to you too. Um, that's interesting. I'm going to Polly, um, globalization. You get a lot of global brands, Polly, don't you, coming to Tish Tash and Natasha, of course. And it's interesting because yes. these are the kind of conversations you will have them about the cultural differences. Um, yeah. and, I, and I think Her Excellency, you know, really today, my key message would just be exactly what I think you have taken away from this, which is just to educate, give these ladies the confidence. You, you, somebody's actually put, sorry, Polly, somebody's put in the chat box as well. If we can do it all, why would we pay for an agency if we can do it ourselves? Because 
you're going to end up being a photographer, a videographer, a PR, the sales girl on the Saturday, the the person running the website, you can't always do everything yourself. And also you can't spend weeks at a time. You don't have the connections and the, and the, and the exactly. contacts that, 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 that an agency has. But if exactly. we, if we, um, Your Excellency, if we have an understanding as business owners of it, we know what good looks like. So if we go to work with an agency or a freelancer or the graphic designer who takes two weeks <laughs> and we get sick of waiting <laughs> and they don't do what we want, we know how to bring it back and either do it ourselves or what good looks like so we don't lose our money or our confidence or, or any or any of those things but but Polly as well about globalization and um and kind of making it more regional yes it's uh, yeah, it's, it's, a gr it's exactly sorry just one thing we women we are strong we are the nation building true we are everywhere and we can do five tasks in the same time we can learn either do and I know like me I go to learn a graphic I have to understand about the website design like you say I did that experience but in the same times uh, because we used to handle to someone and someone do for us that's why and second like why we are competing to each other instead of collaborating with each other mostly the women even they say it's an ego sorry don't get offended my ladies but I see I try to build my committee as for the women empowerment I try to gather them from different country in the end you have one or two they are pissed off and they don't want to work with this one and this one uh, i i would love that you and put this in big chapter time to collaborate not to compete because now we just competing from nothing and the humanity need our hand to be together so i think what kelly did today is putting us the map road and highlighting things which exist in just we want, hey, wake up. It's time to do it yourself because everyone now working from home and that's virtual and technology is being affordable and easy. With a small mobile device, you can do a lot. So this is the point. Heba, you've done amazing a gathering. Uh, Kelly and all the ladies are here. Thank you so much. You're inspiring me and it's fantastic. And I hope this will continue and continue and continue. Thank you again. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Um, no, um, there's a, there's a training. There's there's a whole plan. There's a whole plan, and this is about collaboration. And this is because women work better together. And this is because women do need more confidence to put themselves and their small business out onto a regional and global scale and, and have that confidence as well. Um, Mega, I'm not sure if she's still here, has asked a question. I think this is really important, Tash, actually. I think it's a completely fair question. How much should people expect to pay for PR services or an agency? Well, we've touched on the advantage of hiring an agency if you can do it yourself, but I think it's really important, you know, talking about prices and transparency so people are either not neither put off nor scared. Yeah, I, I mean, everything, you know, there's different levels, you know, I mean, as a startup, you know, generally, you know, you won't be going to the big global agencies because most of them have a minimum of 10,000 US dollars spend uh, a month and it has to be at least for six months. So I think, but, you know, there are some amazing, amazing freelancers out there now, um, you know, who you, you know, probably about 3,000 a month, you know, you need to think about PR as an investment. So you need to do at least three months, if not six. So, you know, it's not just a one month hit. Um, you know, um, I'd say generally like mid-size agencies, 10,000, 12,000 plus a month. That's for UEE only. Obviously, the more things you add in, like if it's GCC, then it is going to cost you more. Um, but, you know, there are levels and there are agencies and freelancers for kind of, you know, the majority of budgets, you know, um, when you are in a position to outsource. Yeah, I think it's really, sorry, I think it's really, really important to have these conversations and, and for people to know what things cost. I really do. Um, you know, there's absolutely no point in people either being scared off by it or, or, or and I know this happens to you as an agency, people coming to you with 2000 dirham budgets. You know, you, you're just wasting each other's time in the nicest, in the very nicest possible way, aren't you? You know, which doesn't really help anybody. Um, so yeah, I do think we should be talking numbers more. Um, Trust is an obstacle to collaboration, um, Amy says. Um, are, you an, do you, are you the kind of person who doesn't trust people, Amy? I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm not, I don't expect you to answer that. I feel that trust needs to be a bit intrinsic. I feel that if we do, if like if we do our if we do our homework properly and we believe in ourselves and what it is we're doing and our you know and our, and our own kind of integrity, 
then you have to have that immediate trust. You only know what you know. You know, you have the tools that you have with the knowledge that you have at the time to be able to create something and move forward. Um, and if you do your homework or if it's something you're not quite sure about asking a friend, colleague, you know, or, or somebody part of your network to kind of help you help you advise on that. Um, but but yeah, I do feel that regionally trust is a, can be an issue, almost like everybody that you pay to do something is, is trying to rip you off or or do one over on you. And it, it's just not true, really. Generally, people are good and there's bad apples everywhere, but it, it's so much in preparation um and and kind and having that having that knowledge you know you can see quite easily who has kind of fake followers these days there's tools to do that um you can see immediately there's one thing i will bring this up actually for the people who are still here because i feel quite strongly about this and it's not absolutely not an attack on the people who are doing it so we've obviously seen less with covid but event organizers who charge small businesses for table space great people like going to these events people like to uh, the opportunity to sell and, and meet their customers etc families like to visit them um i don't think they market themselves very well and i think that vendors feel then if if the market organizers are not promoting and marketing their own markets then um the vendors become upset because there's no footfall they feel like they've wasted their time and money and a lot of event organizers tend to rely on the vendors to do their own marketing without doing so much themselves so i would absolutely love to see more people who sit on that umbrella of them working with smaller vendors do better marketing and pr for their for their for, for their events for sure because it's something I've noticed a lot of over the, I mean, I'm, I'm going back years. These things have obviously been happening for years. And, and I do think, you know, we horror stories is, is, is the wrong word, but it, it's really, really flattening for you as a small vendor to spend all day standing in the sun or, or somewhere else or paying somebody to help you with the store, setting up the store, buying things you need to go and find nobody there. Um, and I just, you know, that's just something that, um, that's just really really disheartening and and loses trust in events that gets people going events don't work i'm not going to that i went and i didn't sell anything um and just 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 and you know that's it, it's about collaboration but but in more ways than than just one i think um and even i think a lot of the online sites possibly don't do enough by way of supporting their you know the multi-vendor platforms don't quite do enough in their own marketing um, but there's some very good ones out there and that's not a criticism of that as an industry it's just something that I notice and it would be nice to see them working harder with their vendors to be able to to you know to, to create a bit more promotion because if they sell more it's it's good for the platform right so you know everybody wins everybody wins um, right we need to finish yeah um, we need to finish um, so thank you so much um, to Jen thank you so much to Heber and um, UN Women and Nama for asking me to present this today. And my personal thank you to uh, Polly and Natasha who are just fabulous. And I know how busy you are. So thank you again for giving us such valuable time of yours at such a busy time. Um, I really appreciate it. And thank you, thank Jen. You. And remember, you know, we're always stronger together. And so it's so important that we collaborate and work together and support each other. So we're looking forward to future sessions with everyone. So thank you and have a wonderful weekend. And to those of you celebrating, enjoy your Eid celebrations next week as well. Thank you, everyone.